I'm Mark Winkleman. We have professional coating technology. Uh, we manufacture the coating that goes inside of your drinking water pipe. So if you ever taken a bath or if you ever taken a shower, uh, the chances are you uh, took it across coating that we manufacture so we keep your water safe. Uh, and in our plant, this is our uh, solution room. And what we do is we take the water side of the coating and we make it so it'll be uh, 100% right, 100% of the time. So what we have is we have process procedures, and we call these process procedures SOPs. They're standard operating procedures. It's just the right way to do everything, a precise way that we can do it each time, each time successfully. Because what happens is, uh, as as guys are, and, uh, we think that we know the best way to do something, and we stay shortcuts if we don't have a process procedure. And then without that uh, safeguard of having a process that we follow every time, then we might make mistakes or make bad, bad products. Uh, and even over here in the asphalt unload area, where we unload uh, our tanker trucks, we have safety chains that says do not cross this line unless you're authorized to do so. Uh, and even as the owner of the company, uh, I don't cross that line because it's not safe. Uh, I might put someone else in danger, I might put myself in danger. So I set uh, the right example uh, to comply to the safety chains and the guardrails that we have uh, in place. excited uh, to open up this first session of our small group uh, teaching here in this new series called Guardrails. And it's kind of cool because this first session I'm here with a whole group of people here at lunch at uh, PCT and uh, is the name of the company, the Winkleman. The Winkleman's uh, own it, started here. And, and Mark and Denise, thank you for letting us be a part of it. Just so excited about everybody. We just went around the circle and got to know each other a little bit. And Mark, you guys meet every week, don't you? Tell us a little bit about that, how it came about, what's going on. Uh, we started a Bible study just uh, on Wednesdays and reading the Bible and going through the Bible uh, about four or five years ago. And then uh, we kind of dropped it away uh, because sometimes it's hard to have a, a format built in the Bible. Everybody got to get sidetracked on it. And then we started a, uh, when you offered the small group, mm -hmm. we took, uh, talked to Denise and said, let's do a small group. And so we started the small group. And what I like about that is kind of has like a built-in format. You don't have to do anything. You don't have to think. Right. You just plug it in and, and play it. So that helped us and it helps us stay on track because we just have a short period of time we can focus in and, and uh, learn. So you guys do it right in here, play the video, and here's this week. You don't have to play the video, I'm here live. <laughs> <laughs> that and, uh, or not so, how to work that That's one. right, so here we are. <laughs> and uh, I'm, we're, we're starting this new series, Guardrails. And you guys have seen guardrails. You don't pay a lot of attention to guardrails a, a lot of time when you're on the highway or going down the road. And if you ever really notice it, it's like somebody hit it and so it's all like mm -hmm. torn up over the side. Or like when I was in Colorado and we were going up the mountains and then you look down over where you're driving and it's this huge cliff, then you just psychologically are excited about having the guardrail there because <laughs> it's like, okay, that's helping me. And I, I'm really scared of heights, so it kind of freaked me out. But uh, I'm glad for the guardrails. Now, guardrails and the principle of this series is, it, you know, guardrails on the highway is a system that's designed to protect you and your vehicle from going into dangerous or unsafe territory, right? Mm -hmm. And that's just what it is. So we're talking about in our life. And let me tell you something. You guys have all seen it, I know. But I see as a pastor in the position I'm in, I'm talking to people all the time who come to the altar or come to my office or write me an email and say, man, I wrecked my marriage. My, my marriage is over. It's bad. Hey, I wrecked my finances. I am in trouble. Hey, you know, my life's in trouble. My health's in trouble. And they're talking about how they've gone over the cliff, so to speak, where they've wrecked uh, their life. And this series is about building and constructing life guardrails that will help us not to wreck our life or our marriage or anything like that. Now, I was thinking about guardrails. I was thinking about where you see them on the, the road. Because you don't see them like, they don't just 
cover all the whole highway, everywhere you go, they're, they're there. They're in certain areas. Where bridges are, or where there are the cliffs, like I was speaking there, because the, the margin of error is, is small. And so when it, when it gets like, man, you could go over that, you know, over the side of that bridge, they're going to have guardrails there, right? When it's a median, when, when you're, you have traffic going the opposite direction of you, that is uh, close, so you're going to have that there to protect you, right? Whoa, you know, you want to make sure on that. And uh, then also on times when there's a curve, when there's an unexpected change. I think that's pretty interesting when you parallel that to our life, and you guys might want to talk sure. about that mm -hmm. in the discussion uh, later, because think about that. I mean, when people are going the opposite direction of you, or when you're going into areas that have a huge cliff, you better have guardrails in your life when the, the, uh, there's less margin for error mm -hmm. or when there's curves and there's things that are unexpected, you need to have those guardrails. Now, when we're talking about guardrails for our life, you might be still going like, okay, cool thought, but what are you even talking about? I'm not sure I even understand. <laughs> well, we're talking about setting up personal convictions or personal guardrails, uh, decisions that you make in your life to say, as for me, now everybody else it may be okay for them to do this, but for me, I'm going to put up a guardrail, I'm going to make a rule in my life that says I'll not do this. And it's even in an area that isn't even, now think about it, guardrails are not in a danger zone, they're in a safe zone, they're on the highway. If, you, if that guardrail wasn't there and you were driving where the guardrail was, you're still in a safety. It's just protecting you from going into something that's dangerous. And so the thing that we're talking about is creating personal convictions that are still in an area of safety. But for you, you've made a decision, for, I'm not doing that. I'm not going to do that because I don't even want to get close to the edge of destruction. Does this make sense? Yeah, sure. and, and, and so, like, like... The world didn't like this. Okay, so the world all agrees. That, let, let's just talk about it a minute. The world all agrees that even, even people who don't go to church agree, okay, having an affair is not a good thing. Okay? Are you, am I right? I mean, most people. Yeah. I'm right, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Affairs are bad. Okay? Uh, hey, losing your home, going into debt where you can't pay your bills and, and father make her. That's not, everybody thinks that that is bad. It's not just Christians who think that, right? Uh, hey, being an alcoholic and, and, and having that as a bondage, uh, a chemical dependency on drugs or alcohol, everyone thinks of that as bad. I'm right, right? right. Okay, so everybody know, knows that that stuff is cliff stuff. Mm -hmm. Right. But if, I, but if you start talking about setting up guardrails to not get close to an affair or to not get close to alcohol addiction or not to get close to not being able to pay your bills. And you say, we're going to put guardrails up. People go, man, you're extreme. You're, what do you mean? You get, do you understand what I'm saying? Because like the way of the world is saying it like this, drink responsibly. What does drink responsibly mean? Now, I'm not saying drinking is wrong, but when they're saying drinking responsibly, they're saying don't, don't get drunk to a point that you cause danger to somebody. But really, most of the time when I'm hearing people and I'm on the other side of the DUI in their counseling session or they're, they're going to jail time or they're losing their marriage or all of this, they're thinking, they're saying stuff like, hey, I was trying to drink responsibly, but when it came to the point, I didn't even know where responsibility was. And then I was going, I don't care if it's responsible or not, right? Okay, so again, it's kind of like a nice thought, but it's not a guardrail. That's a, a cultural yellow line line that says drink responsibly but there is a guardrail says you know what I mean they're like for me my guardrail may be different for you okay because the Bible doesn't say drinking alcohol is sin it says moving to the point where you become drunk in fact the passage we look at today in our talk and everything <coughs> we're doing in the talk here in Ephesians chapter 5 says don't be drunk with wine that leads to debauchery see debauchery means to lose all control and to do crazy dumb stuff and foolish stuff so it's not that even drinking alcohol is sin. the Bible doesn't say that it says what it does is if you're not careful it will lead you to a cliff It'll lead you. Dr being drunk isn't a sin as much as it is foolish, the scripture says, because now you go to debauchery and you lose control. Do you understand the difference between a yellow line that says drink responsibly or a, a guardrail for me that says I'm not going to drink at all or a guardrail that says, hey, I'll only have you know wine with my meal every now and then? 
Do you get what I'm saying? That's guardrail. Yeah. Same thing like we'll talk in the next few weeks about in not having an affair. I mean, people go, I don't know how it happened. Really? <laughs> you, you, you don't know how it started with you having dinner with Boy, them. It started with you staying late at the office. It started with you having the Facebook discussions or with that. So if you have guardrails that say, and we'll talk about this later, you don't do those things, you'll never end up going over the cliff of an affair. This makes sense, right? Mm -hmm. So that's, that's what we're talking about on, on setting up those guardrails in our life. But I want to start today just giving an example that's not in any of those, but it's in my personal life that I got a conviction on that uh, I think with, starts out as a good example of how even in our personal life in every area, there are areas we need to have personal areas of convictions. Now, when I say this, some of you say, well, I don't think that I have to have that in my life. Absolutely. See, guardrails are things that are personal conviction. It's where I set it up because I want to stay in, in, in a place closer to the truth of the scripture and to, to narrow that gap of, of getting even close to the, the, the cliff. You know, I don't want to be the guy that if this is the cliff, we're getting right next to it and I'm going, da, 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 you know, messing around. And I want to stay away from that and build the guardrail. Okay, think about it. I'm driving down the road. I hit the guardrail. Are you bummed about that? Of course you are. You, 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 got, you messed up your car. It's dented. You, it's going to cost you some money. It's scratched. You're going, oh, I, I'm going to have to tell my husband. Oh, he's going to kill me. Or I'm going to have to tell him. Right? I'm with, you're with me on that, right? But how much better is it to scratch the paint and have the dent on the guardrail than to be at the bottom of the ditch or the cliff that could be fatal in, in, in an explosion and like movie dramatic, right? That's what guardrails are about. Is that some things may not be sin, but when you scratch up against it inside your conscience is, I know I'm not at the place where I'm destroying myself yet, but right now this is getting close. And it makes me feel guilty and it makes me feel convicted and I don't want to do this. So like I said, even on the alcohol and what we're talking about today in Ephesians 5 where it says don't be drunk with wine, but be filled with the Holy Spirit because the drinking of being drunk leads to debauchery. I'm not saying, the scripture doesn't say that drinking alcohol is sin. But for me... It is like sin, because it's my guardrail. My guardrail is, I. now it's easier for me to say I'm not going to do that, because I grew up not doing that, and because uh, uh, I, never, I never did it, and because I've had so many people in my office that they're, they're married. I've never heard anybody say, you know what, our family was really having a hard time until we all started drinking, <laughs> and that alcohol really brought us together. You know, I've never heard that. I've never heard, you know, <laughs> I was really having a hard time with my finances until I started drinking. And then, woo, it just all came to you. No, I've never heard it that way. I only hear the bad things associated with it. And yet, what does society say? Drink responsibly. And the same thing with the, the sex stuff, you know. Uh, hey, is sex, you should only do sex as long as, as you're ready. <laughs> Man, I've never met a guy who wasn't ready. <laughs> but a lot of ladies who are ready too. You know, are you ready? I'm ready. I'm, give me a week. Give me a week. Okay, all right. I'll give you a week. Okay, we'll be ready then. I mean, that doesn't even make sense. It's not a guardrail. That's a, and here he says you got to hide it in your heart. And so I'll just give you an illustration. Growing up, my dad, every morning when we would go to school, we did the same memory verse every morning that I had to say before I got out of the car. I'm talking from kindergarten till I started driving my car on my own to school. Every day, my dad would say, okay, son, uh, say your verse. Psalm 1914. Let the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Now, when I was in kindergarten, I didn't have a clue what even a redeemer was or anything like that. So I'd be going, I worked my mouth, meditating my heart, acceptable sight, a large strength redeemer. But by dad, okay, I didn't even understand it. As I got older, I started understanding it more, but it really wasn't hidden in my heart. It was in my head, but not where it's here hidden in my heart. I remember when I was 17... I became a, a volunteer youth leader at our church. Our youth pastor left. My dad said, could you kind of handle it until we get somebody? And I had just graduated high school. That fall, I turned or 18, and, and that fall was going to the schools and football games and just ministering to the, the high schoolers there in junior high. And I remember this one game at Reagan High School. 
remember, you know, Reagan and Austin, and uh, there's this girl who's a cheerleader there, and, and I sat, my tickets were like on the very top row of the stadium, and that Sunday, I saw her, I said, I saw you at the game, right, oh, I didn't see you, Pastor Scott, I said, oh, yeah, I was at the game, I, I saw you, you look great from up there. And, and I was just messing around, kind of like, hey, you look great in the dark, or, you know, hey, you're pretty with a bag over your head, just being stupid, right, just being silly. She walked away bawling, crying, because I didn't even think about it. She had a little skin blemishes, on, you know, her skin, little acne issue, and so she thought what I was doing is making fun of her, saying that from up there, you couldn't even tell how ugly your face is. With that. I wasn't even thinking that. It so broke her heart, she went home and told her dad, <coughs> Oh. I don't want to go to church anymore. Oh. This is a big deal for this girl. She's a junior in high school. She said, I don't, if that, you know, I already have this issue, and that's where it's supposed to be safe, and you hear that. When he came and told me that, he had tears in his eyes saying, you don't know that every night we're praying just that God will help her with her self-esteem and everything. And this just her. I went to her, I apologized and did all that, but you know what most of all happened? Is God dealt with me on this issue. What do you want to be known for? Do you want to be known as the funny, cool guy? Or do you want to be known as the person of love and the person who encourages? And you say, well, can't you be all? Can't you be cool and funny and all of the, and, and encouraging, loving? At sometimes. But for me, my mouth, it's a gift. Okay, it's a gift God's given to me to teach. It's a gift. I have powerful words, a gift to do that. So when you have that, it also can be a weapon that can be hurtful. There's life and death in your tongue. And so for me, I had to set up guardrails. You know what my guardrails had to become? I am only going to speak what builds people up, affirms them, and encourages them. As I turned to the scripture and I started studying it, listen to what it says in Ephesians 5 and verse 29, or 4, verse 29. Do not let any unwholesome talk come out of your mouths, but only what is helpful for building others up according to their needs, that it may benefit those who listen. And don't grieve the Holy Spirit of God with whom you have been sealed for the day of redemption. Now, it says here, don't let any unwholesome talk come out of your mouth, except for what builds up and encourages. So does that mean really that it's a sin if I told that girl, you look good from up here? Was that sin? No. But it hurt. I built guardrails according to this and said, I'm not going to let any of that. You know what I'm going to do? Is I'm going to affirm people. And you know what? I think sometimes um, people could say, well, that Pastor Scott, he's a little bit He's always encouraging people, and that's a good thing. But some of the other, he just overdoes it. He just pumps people up all the time. You know why? Because I made guardrails in my life that everything coming out of my life, here's the filter. Does it build them up? Does it encourage them? Does it make them stronger? Does it affirm them? Does it encourage them in their life? Do they walk away from me feeling built up? Then that's what I'm going to do. And I'd rather be known as the loving, encouraging person who cares than to be the person who they go, dude, that guy's so funny. He is so cool. That became guardrails to me. And that's when Psalm 1914 was hidden now in my heart. That the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart, the deep things of my heart, be acceptable in thy sight. You're my Lord. That's the boss, the one who sets the standards and builds the guardrails. My strength the one who helps me to stay within the guardrails, and my Redeemer, the one who helps me even when I wreck. He's all of that to us. You know, God will help us even when we go over the cliff. Even when we go off road into dangerous, unsafe stuff, He'll forgive us, He'll cleanse us. But let me tell you something. The best thing God wants for us is to never have to even get into those danger places of destruction for our families or our finances or our marriages. He wants to keep you in a place of great blessing. That's what this series is all about. You know what's great about this? Is whether you're a Christian or not a Christian, we all should have wisdom enough to build guardrails that we won't live at the edge, but we'll live in a place of wisdom and blessing. All right, let me pray for you. God, I pray 
not only for this group, but I pray for all the groups that are watching right now. I pray that you would help us as we go into discussion time to be honest and to even examine. Uh, ladies may meet with ladies, guys with guys, however that works in the group, but God, to talk about, you know what, if there's an area in my life I need to build a guardrail, it's in this area. God, I pray that we would be honest, like Ephesians 5 that t talks about how we've got to be honest about this stuff. We've got to understand what your will is, which means face up to it. Admit it. Look at it. Get serious about it. Quit playing around. Help us, Lord, so that no one, not one of us, would wreck our life. But we would live in the way you've designed for us to live in blessing. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 amen.